Hey everyone, it's Aster. I want to have a very soulful conversation with you guys and I want to talk about the purpose of your underdog past and the reason why I want to have this conversation is that when you understand why certain things happen to you, not just the what, the contents, but the why, the context from a greater spiritual perspective, this understanding can really equip you with a greater sense of purpose, identity, and intention moving forward because how we have our early life I think sets much of a stage for our life overall and so it can be very helpful to have this knowledge Uh, but beyond just you know teaching about why you went through certain things I also want to give you guys some wisdom that will keep you on the right path because it's not enough to just know why you went through certain things and then be inspired to live purposefully but it's also important to understand that even if you are a chosen one that we are all human at the end of the day still and so we're still uh, susceptible to human pitfalls and we are not exempt we're not exceptions to the rule when it comes to things like temptation and so that's really important to keep in mind if you want to reach your destiny so this is not just the uh, why uh, you had an underdog past but I also want to give you guys some wisdom for your destiny okay and so first of all when it comes to chosen ones I think that there are two main types so there are those who they live in service to others they have a good heart and um, they they strive to live upright without hypocrisy okay a lot of religious people are like this Um, however they are still under heavy mind control so although they have the heart the heart is in the right place um, their consciousness is not quite open Um, and so um, it's kind of complicated to understand without sounding elitist but they're chosen but they are not able to be used to the as fully as some other second type of chosen ones I'm going to mention because the suppression of the consciousness due to mind control okay and you might wonder what's mind control that's a whole nother subject but basically it's like how the mind has been conditioned through living in a society that has given us a lot of false understanding and knowledge okay so that's a mind control and a primer but then there is a second type of chosen one and this is who this video is for whom you have a good heart your consciousness is more open and you're not meant to just reform the world but you're meant to revolutionize the world and essentially you're here to help overturn the matrix system I know (laughs) it sounds like a lot but that's what um, the chosen ones of the second category are are meant to do okay and so it's not always um, protesting but it's just the act of embodying your true destiny um, and living uh, in obedience to God uh, and not allowing yourself to be completely controlled by the system that's a way that you can help overturn it okay um, so the first group people who have a really great heart but still very much under mind control second group is you have a good heart you're, and also your consciousness is more open and you're here specifically to help overturn the matrix system okay um, anyway group number two chosen ones <laughs> um, I got this definition from Google, but uh, Google defines an underdog as a person who has little status in society. And most, I think all chosen ones of the second category um, have been an underdog at some point in their life. And it could be due to your economic status. It could be due to a physical disability, a, a difficult childhood, a combination of these things. and by the way when it comes to economic status understand it is relative to the people around you so if you all live in poverty then there's not really that contrast or feeling stigmatization but um, usually people who are uh, you know underdog due to economic status when you're a chosen one it's like you are someone who Um, there is a a contrast to you or people like you and so you have experienced a shame of economic um, you know like maybe you or were didn't have as much money 
as your classmates kind of thing or your, your close friends, stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't always have to be that way though, um, but that's why I included other things like physical disability um, or, you know, it could be a, a, whatever it is, something that makes a person somewhat like an underdog, some kind of stigma. And it's not due to their own doing. It's not their own choice. It's not them reaping what they sow, but it was something that they couldn't control. Um, it's like something about them. They have experienced being the underdog in society um, or a combination of these things that I mentioned. And so most chose oh, well I would say all chosen ones pretty much they experienced this and even if they were not um, poor per se it's like um, there was something about them where they experienced feeling less than in some way okay <laughs> uh, so uh, an example of underdogs is Peter Parker in Spider-Man Neo in the Matrix and Jesus was also an underdog <laughs> you know he didn't grow up in a lavish uh, you know, a huge home or anything like that to a king. Um, he grew up from very humble beginnings. And so that is like a prime example of an underdog. I would have included female characters too, but I didn't have one come to mind. So that's why I just have male characters, but it's nothing personal to the ladies. Okay. <laughs> you know, I love women because I'm a woman, but that's a whole nother subject. But um, anyway, you know, being an underdog growing up, you didn't fit in. So maybe you are the black sheep of your family, you are rejected by your peers um, in school or church or wherever. Um, it could be that everywhere you went, you didn't fit in, you were a misfit. So it could be family, church, school, and <laughs> wherever else, okay? And so there is this big theme of not fitting in, of you know, feeling like you are not as significant and important as another crowd and you may not necessarily have been bullied per se but there was some kind of um, overlay on you where it was like you were not as important you were not as special that kind of vibe okay um, so that is what I mean by underdog in a nutshell um, I think that when it comes to having conditions or being an underdog you know some people go through trauma or difficult conditions and it makes them bitter so I'm not saying that just because people went through difficult circumstances that they're automatically chosen but with chosen ones when it came to being an underdog it, it was something that helped develop their character and so I want to explain why you had this underdog past so I think that the humble circumstances it makes you dependent on God because it's a, a thing where you're not validated by your external environment and so you need to go within and it helps you also being an underdog sympathize with the oppressed the forgotten the overlooked instead of just wanting to be with the popular elite crowd because you were in those shoes you know what it feels like and so um, you know some people is all about virtue signaling but I'm not talking about virtue signaling here it's more just um, sympathizing from a, a pure and sincere place not because you want other people to look at how charitable you are but it's something you really feel in your heart um, a lot of times because you were in those shoes okay and um, and being an underdog also makes you not depend on external validation because when you have dealt with rejection, when you have dealt with not fitting in, um, you become cynical of approval of man. And so it's not always a bad thing. I'm not talking about cynicism in a bad way here, but it, it just makes you less dependent on external val validation. And finally, when you're an underdog, you know, um, you become more loyal to spirit over man or societal institutions because you have been familiar with them. Um, I think you see the corruption in people, you see the corruption in institutions, and so it, it causes you the cynicism to develop a loyalty more to God than people or societal institutions such as the school system, um, church, or anything else you know because a lot of people they are dependent on degrees or church uh, affiliation or something external to them workplace for their sense of identity but I think that 
when you have dealt with um you know seeing the hypocrisy the corruption in others and i think also the self-centeredness it, it makes you cynical to that kind of thing people and, and institutions the herd mentality you know um and so when it comes to being a chosen one there are two main paths so as i said that just because you know that you're chosen and why certain things happen to you doesn't necessarily mean that um, you're not susceptible to temptation right and so i'm going to start with the left hand path so when it comes to the left hand path there are some people who are chosen or who have much of a chosen sort of imprint but they um, end up being more on the left hand path which is service to self oriented. And so this is um, a lot of people where their pride gets in the way. So they find out they're anointed or chosen um, and they might actually be, but then the pride gets in the way and they don't realize that it's not about starting well, but it's about finishing as well. Um, so what happens with these people is that they might have a, a good start they might have a strong start and I don't wish them bad you know I want everyone to reach their destiny that's part of the reason I'm creating this video but the problem is if you don't understand your own ego and your own human pitfalls then you can easily get swept away by the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life which make up that's one of that's the way that the matrix ensnares people and these people the matrix system is like their provider and so um, for instance maybe they will become a well-known content creator and you know all of the underdog con the kind of uh, training that they went through it can be in vain because the pride gets in the way so it's like yeah the life could have been difficult in the beginning but then the pride got in the way um, they became too full of themselves and you know because they don't understand a blind spot of how the matrix controls people they get enticed by that and their what could have been a pure anointing gets corrupted and so they their path gets compromised because they become more oriented to the service to self the other path what i would call the straight and narrow path is a a path that where a chosen one is in service to others it's a, a much much more difficult path <laughs> and not many people honestly go and stay on that path but um you know i want to read philippians 2 5 11 because i think that it sums up this path very well so this um passage goes in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own ad advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross and I love that because I think that is the way that chosen ones are meant to live is that we can realize that we are meant to be made in the image and likeness of God and we have God within us and although we can become prideful about having God's light in us we, when you have maturity you realize it's not about me it's not about me and my light but it's about God's light and his glory and so you don't take advantage of the fact you have God inside of you rather you realize that the light is from God and you want to give glory to God uh, but understanding that you realize you are just a vessel and when you want to live on a path of obedience then it's not just about being obedient so you can elevate, but it's till the end. <laughs> and so it's a lot of endurance. It's a lot of self-discipline and it's about dying to yourself. And it's a, a kind of path of, of true selflessness. And that's why it's very difficult. But anyway, <clears throat> that is the right hand path in a nutshell where you remain humble and you give glory to God 
and you understand that just because you're anointed or chosen doesn't mean your success is guaranteed, doesn't mean that you're automatically, uh, you know, going to be saved a spot in heaven. You have to work at this. You have to remain obedient to the end of your life to be in the, I think, get the greatest spiritual inheritance you can in heaven. And so that's why it's important not to just know you're chosen and do purpose work, but your work has to be where you're constantly and continually submitted to God and you will be obedient to the end of your life. Now, how many people want to do that? <laughs> Not very many, right? It's like if you live until you're, you're 60 or 70 or 80 and you're uh, still a spring chicken, it's like I have to be obedient till that long. Yes, you do. You have to continually submit yourself, refine yourself. And the more you know, the more you mature, you have to live an even more sanctified life because when you know better, you have to do better. So it doesn't really get easier over time um, because you have to, you're held to an even higher standard the more you advance in wisdom. So it's, it's a difficult path, but I think that there are so many rewards with it. And I love Luke 14, 11, which goes for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It sums up being on the right hand path very well, where, you know, if you exalt yourself, <laughs> you're going to be humbled. <laughs> but when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. And that doesn't necessarily mean fame and fortune, but it's a spiritual ranking, you know, and given more spiritual responsibility throughout the duration of your life. So it's so important to not only start off well, but you have to continue to focus on God and do what he commands. Uh, there's this quote I heard recently, which goes, um, it's actually my desktop screen quote. It says, put your good where it will do the most. And I totally agree with that because a lot of times we do things that are distractions. We do busy work, but you need to do things that will do the most good. So do that every day, <laughs> whatever God is nudging you to do, do the thing that will do the most good every day. You have to always prioritize. So <clears throat> anyway, though, with that said, um, I want to transition to uh, how the first group of uh, or how um, some chosen ones uh, the they the matrix system is your provider right but when you are on the right hand path and you're truly dedicated to this path then God is your provider and I think that's so important to understand because you know this world will make it seem like um, you have to be indebted to the matrix system um, there is this song called The Sky is a Landfill by Jeff Buckley. It's a really, really amazing song. And there's a couple lines that are, are so pertinent to this conversation. But it goes, this way of life is so devised to snuff at the mind that moves, moving with grace that, that men despise and women have learned to lose. Throw off your shame or be a slave to the system. The actual song itself, it, it, it will... The singing is really amazing, but um, that last line, throw off your shame or be a slave to the system, it's really speaking to how a lot of times people are afraid to give the comforts of life up to do what is right because they don't want to get the privileges taken away. You know, they are afraid of what can happen if they stand for the truth, stand for what is right. And so... A lot of times people are enslaved by their addiction to things, you know, um, their addiction to materialism. And so a lot of people, they, in my view, in my interpretation of this line is that, um, you know, people like, basically sell their souls to uh, for security, but that makes them a slave to the system. And the reason why they do that is because people are afraid that if they lose their security they're going to be less than they're going to be a nobody um, so there's some shame in that but that's why you have to have self-respect 
because self-respect is the same thing as self-love and you have to know your worth and your worth doesn't come from the world but it comes from God so even if you had to do something that would uh, mean you lose your job or you know you don't have the you, the goodies of the matrix system it might not be like some everything is completely taken away but it's like you're not selling your soul and so in that vein you will not have as uh, much material security as some other people um, that's okay because if you know your worth and you realize it comes from God then no matter um, you know if you have money or you don't have money then you understand that the most important thing is doing the right thing and what I'm getting at here is not that chosen ones are meant to be broke and chosen ones are meant not to have money that's not what I'm saying I think that having money and some financial security is always great it's beneficial it can give you freedom but what I'm getting at is a lot of people they compromise doing what is right and standing for the truth because they are don't want to lose the material security um, and so in that sense they serve the God of materialism as opposed to doing what is right being in obedience okay um, and it's kind of interesting because when it comes to the matrix system which as I said uh, keeps us enslaved and distracted by the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life I think this is referenced in the book of John uh, so many Christian leaders say things like I don't care about man's approval <laughs> you may have heard that yourself but when you have discernment when you are somewhat of a seer you can tell a lot of these people are still very much loyal to the matrix system um, so one way this can show up is designer label worship now there's nothing wrong with having designer items I, I don't really care about that but I think there's a difference between appreciating and worshiping like when someone is constantly displaying designer logos and they are supposed to be men or women of God and are constantly just showcasing it um, that is oftentimes a reflection of the how they worship these brands idolize them in their heart uh, but it's kind of interesting because most of these um, brands I would say all of them the main ones are like all connected to the Illuminati if you see that advertising saw like you know <laughs> if you know you know but as I said I don't really care I mean I think some of those things are pretty they are cute they're beautiful but what I'm getting at is that when you worship them uh, like a god then it's a problem you know it, it speaks to you worshiping materialism um, but more than that it's also so many people are loyal to other matrix institutions such as the church the government and celebrity culture <laughs> which is a big one and when it comes to the institutionalized church I do think some churches are genuine and they're not they're not under mind control but most of them are extensions of the matrix system by virtue of them being heavily under mind control and so uh, I'm not saying I'm against church and all churches should be eradicated but I think that many churches today are under the influence of mind control programming from the matrix system and so in that sense they are institutionalized um, and uh, you know some people I think that I think it also depends on the purity of the church so some churches might have that mind control programming but they are genuinely trying to help others and is more pure whereas there are others I would say the vast majority of churches where it's just about getting members and it's just about um, you know having some type of religious affiliation so that's what I'm more critical of like I think if a church is more sincere more truth oriented then that's not something I'm as critical of although the mind control aspect I don't really admire however I think that what I'm more critical of is just like your average standard run-of-the-mill church which I think it doesn't contribute to illumination and enlightenment but it suppresses a consciousness um, but with that uh, you know a lot of Christian leaders they're so tethered to the approval of 
the institutionalized church and and that's something i don't i don't really um admire okay i, I think that it is uh, um a lot of times people don't share the real truth or they're afraid to seek the truth because they don't want to be in wrong standing with the institutionalized church so that's still a form of people pleasing and being uh, overly concerned with the opinion of man but um, anyway when it comes to living in obedience to God and not allowing yourself to be controlled by man or societal institutions that are uh, corrupt <clears throat> Your faith is what will keep you going. And it's important to have faith because, you know, sometimes standing for the truth means that you'll have to stand alone. And I love this quote from Viktor Frankl from Man's Search of Meaning that goes, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. And that's so powerful because you know, when people sometimes feel like, um, I don't know, I think that when you're in this matrix system, you are given the message that we have to depend on the system, that, uh, you know, they have to put you on. And that's true to some extent. But I think that when you are obedient to God and you're being led by the Holy Spirit, like you can attract provision. <laughs> it, it's not going to be the conventional way a lot of times, but you can still attract provision and protection because of your obedience. And I think that's what the verse in the Bible means where it says that no child of God will be begging in the streets or something like that. Um, how basically, you know, when you are living righteously and you're serving the kingdom and doing what you're supposed to, then you're going to be provided for. You know, it might not be the way you think or expect, but it, it will be in some way because God is invested in you and, and God sees you as an important asset because it's not just about you and getting to your destiny, but it's about the kingdom of God agendas that need to be fulfilled through you. And so it's, you're really, really important. Okay. If you are someone who is a, a genuine truth seeker who is meant to overturn the matrix through your influence somehow you're a very important individual and you have to understand that you have to remember your worth no matter what your financial condition is whether you're up or down that doesn't mean that you procrastinate be lazy um or you know live in an ascetic life because as i said financial um provision is beneficial to some extent it can give you um, freedom to move around do things but um you know you don't want to make that your God and you don't want to compromise your self-respect and obedience so you can, um, you know, for material security. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, when you, when you lose faith and compromise for security, you might do things like take the mark of the beast where, you know, you're scared about not being able to buy or trade. So you take the mark of the beast because you want to survive and that's why we have to stay strong and the mark of the beast I don't know how that will look like maybe it'll be a micro, micro trip I don't know I have no idea what it will be like but um, what I'm getting at is the mark of the beast to me is symbolic of selling your soul and so if you stay strong even if it means you're out of employment you don't have a place to stay like you have your faith in God you know that God is with you God has your back and so um, you know, that faith is what keeps you going and you don't allow shame. You don't allow, oh, I don't want people to look at me like a bomber or something because you won't take the mark. Uh, you don't let that control you because you have self-respect, you have self-love and that's what matters at the end of the day. I think that a life of nobility is one of selflessness and courage. It's not about martyrdom or virtue signaling or even about elitism to others because the masses are are just asleep and under mind control um, not necessarily bad people right but they are definitely asleep it has to do with their level of consciousness a lot of times but I think it's about living up to your divine duty your responsibility and uh, one thing I do also want to say is that keep in mind it is important to serve others but you do have to have boundaries because there are going to be a lot of broken and damaged people who come to you because you're the light and 
not everyone wants to change some people they are predators they want to act like victims and they just want to use your energy and even if they're not predators it's like you you're not here to save everyone you can't save people but you can point them to God and so you know it's important to be service oriented but you have to know your boundaries um, not only due to predators who act like victims who who play on your sympathy and your good heart but also because I think that you know we can't save people and so we can point people in the right direction um, but you don't want to be their god you don't want to be their guru um, unless you're in a position of responsibility where god is calling you to be a mentor for a little while or something but still like you also have to um, make sure that you know you conserve your energy and you point people to the true source of life and wisdom and love which is god so anyway though um, I want to leave you guys with two quotes and the first one is character is destiny it's a Greek proverb and I love that because I think it's so true you know who you are is where you will go and it's not just in this life but it is also in the afterlife and another quote I love is um, was something Miles Monroe said uh, that when you are a person of with who lacks character then your life is predictable and I, I think that's so true because what I've noticed when it comes to people who lack character is they follow a very similar trajectory it's like um, s certain people they do certain patterns that make them predictable it th their life unfolds in a very obvious manner and so for example in the music industry a lot of people they sell their soul and then when they get older their 50s and 60s they're like wrinkled apples or something like that <laughs> you know they, they they their energy is so depleted and, and they're like um they don't have that vitality and that that purity anymore and that's a form of a uh, you know someone's obvious trajectory due to being on the left hand path and another thing I want to say is a quote by Miles Monroe uh, and he said uh, the greatest tragedy in life is not death but a life without a purpose and for those of you guys who don't know uh, Miles Monroe was a teacher from the Bahamas he did a lot of wonderful teachings on the kingdom of God purpose work and a lot of other great stuff he's a great teacher wrote tre uh, tremendous books and a lot of his teachings are on YouTube it's funny because I don't agree with all his teachings and he wouldn't agree with some of the things I taught but I still find value in a lot of his work you know like he was more of a traditional kind of thinker in the sense where you know stuff like uh, esotericism he wasn't drawn to that um, but you know everyone's a little different but his work I think there was a lot of wonderful content there still and he was exposing a lot of things in his life that went against the matrix systems agenda about the institutionalized church you know he was talking about how you know Jesus's return is not what they're talking about with the rapture but um, how you know there's this thing about dominionism and when the nations all uh, you know learn about the kingdom of God um, then that's when Jesus might return but it's not just about talking about Jesus but it's like the mindset has to change it has to be a renewal of the mind and you know I there is an article really good article on that I might put in the comment section but I think that's true I think that um, you know Jesus's return is not going to be through a, a rapture in the new near future but I think that different events will have to unfold and uh, you know it would be like a the world system would change and they will be governed and operating under a different kingdom set of kind of values but it's not just the Christian church um, but I think it's like a in my view it's um, a spiritual church which is not always 
it's not necessarily relegated just to the Christian faith. That's a whole other topic, but <laughs> it's kind of complicated. I don't want to get it off subject now. But anyway, he died when he was um, 60 years old, and I think he may have been taken out. Um, 60 years old is still quite young. Um, but I share that because he died fairly young, but had a, a life well lived, and so he achieved his destiny. And that's why I want to say is that many people they're afraid to say things that go against the grain that go against the matrix because they don't want to die they're scared of dying and it's so understandable like who wants to die for their convictions right it's a scary thought but that's the thing you have to live beyond the fear of death and even if you do die I think it's important to <laughs> understand that God's uh, protection will usually ensure that it's not a gruesome death you know like um, when you're living in obedience to God then there's going to be that protection where even if you know maybe you are don't live as long life because of your convictions I think that um, you know he'll probably ensure that it's not a gruesome death you know and <laughs> um, but you do have to one of the ways to help ensure that is to live clean so you know you can't live like a double life and and live you know a perverse life behind the scenes and doing godly work on the outside and hope to expect all the protection you know that's very dangerous <laughs> you're playing with god so um, anyway i think that stephen darby he also um was exposing a lot of stuff about the matrix but and i think he was taken out because of that but he did reach his destiny and his um ministry was called destiny Min ministries and so so interesting because he's another example of someone who he was exposing things about the matrix he was exposing things about the the false grace movement in the church but i think more than that it was exposing things about the uh the matrix that um you know that got him in trouble with the powers that be but you know on the plus side millions of people watched his teachings and i still watch his some of his teachings on youtube and it's edifying and he's also someone who was not into esotericism and like i think that we ha had very different beliefs but there are some of his teachings i think were really valuable and edifying and and great content and i, I learned a lot from his videos so two examples of people who they didn't live like the standard christian minister and i think they were probably uh got into trouble due to that but you know if they never shared the truth if they always suppressed those things then that would have been worse because they didn't reach their destiny and so it's better that they spoke their truth and shared what was um, exposing the falsities of the matrix then not share those so anyway i know <laughs> this um teaching it got a little bit longer than i thought it would be but i want to encourage you guys to lean on the holy spirit as opposed to your own will because some of you guys are like yeah i, I want to share the truth i want to do things um exposing the darkness but you feel scared and it's okay to feel scared it's, it's very understandable but you know you have to lean on the holy spirit and you have to be guided by god and if you have are leaning on, on the power of god uh, then i think that you can trust that you will be led in the right direction and i, I love jeremiah twenty nine eleven that goes um that you have a hope in the future and you don't have to worry about being harmed <laughs> and so I, I used to say that verse a lot because you know sometimes it's scary to think about your destiny and the sacrifices and the risks that it will require but i think that you know when you trust in god and you have full faith that god is with you and will protect you um doesn't mean that you won't die <laughs> but i think that you won't get a gruesome death if you are submitted to god and, and living purely um then you can trust in god and that he's not going to lead you in a, a, the wrong direction 
So I also want to leave you with one last piece of scripture, which is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because I think a lot of times we allow our fear to believe that the kingdom of darkness is more powerful than the kingdom of God. But the truth is God is sovereign and reigns above all. So anyway, I hope that this message blessed you and you take care. Be well.